Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for the Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode and it's episode number 152 for February the 1st, 2022. Wow, where did January go? And here we are into February. Okay, gotta get some things done. All right, speaking of getting things done, here's my latest projects that I would like to talk to you and I would like to explain because, well, I kind of made, you, made a little teaser in the title about this. And here it is. This is supposed to be a Bargello. Yes, a Bargello. Uh, but if you look at it closely, I think you'll notice that there's something not quite right here. Yeah, it's really only half a Bargello. You see, over here on this third of the quilt, you can see the Bargello patterning, pattern emerging. And of course, that was supposed to continue over here. So it would be, you know, going down and coming back up kind of a thing. But mine doesn't do that. Now, why? Well... It is a combination between myself making a large error and the pattern. Now, this is called, this originally was called making waves. And this is a pattern, a free pattern that I found on the Art Gallery Fabrics website. And I found it quite some time ago, probably a year and a half ago or so. And it's been sitting on my vision board. Uh, and so I decided I would start making it. And these fabrics, I love these fabrics. I think um, one is called Raps, Flower Raps, Rhapsody. I'll try to say that word fast five times. And Bliss. And uh, can't tell you right now who they're by. But I've had them in my stash for a while waiting for an appropriate pattern. And I thought this one might be it. Well, yeah, it would have been great if I had followed the instructions. Well, actually, that's where the problem lies. I did follow the instructions. They were absolutely horrible. The worst pattern instructions I have ever used. Um, there were so many things that were taken for granted that assumed, I think, that the person making this quilt knew exactly how to do a Bargello and didn't need instructions at all. Now, I have made a Bargello once before, but it was quite a while ago. And Bargellos are not difficult to make, but it's very easy to get yourself confused. And that's what happened here, as you can see. Now, this pattern, as I explored it further, as I tried to work it out, I had to go to Google, look up how to make a, make a Bargello, and I found instructions that were much clearer and essentially, most Bargellos are made the same way. Um, so I could use those instructions as well as the actual original pattern. So I was going along merrily, thinking I had this all figured out. And, well, I guess I didn't. Now, this was a pattern that was designed by Mr. Domestic. And if you were on Stephen and Walter Live uh, this weekend, you heard me talk about Mr. Domestic. Now, I don't want to badmouth another YouTube con content creator or quilt maker. Mr. Domestic, though, I feel his strengths lie more in his fabric designs, because he does design fabric, than in pattern writing. Um, after I got this done, I did explore, and I probably should have done it beforehand. I went looking at Mr. Domestic's YouTube channel to see if he actually did a tutorial about this particular pattern of his. Well, he sort of did. He did not make a full quilt in the tutorial. He made a tiny little pillow slip. He did not really follow the instructions that were printed out by uh, in his pattern. Um, and in his pattern, there are letters all over the place, lettering each strip, each fabric. And that's one of the problems in his pattern because in one section, he uses one set of letters. In another section, he starts a whole new set of letters and the two do not coordinate. At least I can't find a coordination between the two. So that added to my confusion. When he did show the pattern and only briefly on that tutorial, um, it was different than the pattern I downloaded from Art Gallery Fabrics. There is a diagram, a very crucial diagram that is printed out to show you the placement of all the strips. Because essentially you're making two huge tubes that you cut and then at certain sections, you unseam uh, a piece of the tube to make a strip. 
and that's how you line up your fabrics. Now, that's very confusing to explain. You really do need to see how it works. Once you see how it works, it does make sense, but not in his pattern, not at all. And he had a very clear diagram, at least I froze that section on my screen when I was watching his video, but that same page was not in the pattern. Now, did I miss printing a page? No, I did not. It looks to be, to me, that Art Gallery Fabrics, or whoever printed the pattern, decided to save paper and shrink two of his diagrams down and put them onto one page, which made them virtually impossible to see the lettering or the fabrics that he was using. Um, it did not translate out very well when you printed the pattern because it was a PDF, nor did it translate very clearly when you put it on your screen. And I had to blow it up to see it. So I thought I had it all figured out. I thought I was working okay. And then I finished the quilt top, put it out on the floor, and this is what I got. Now, it is still a very pretty quilt, but it is not a Bargello. Only this part's the Bargello part. So I am calling this, well, essentially, this is half a Bargello. So I have decided to rename this quilt as Semibar. Semibargello. Half a Bargello. Okay? I'm just playing with words here. Now, what I think I'm going to do to compensate for this part being essentially just squares of fabric uh, in a diagonal, I'm going to quilt this very heavily. And I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to use a very light thread, I think probably white, so it will show up. And I'm going to use a pantograph that I haven't used yet that is a fairly complex one because it is feathers and pebbles. And what I'm hoping is that if that all goes well, the viewer of the quilt, their eyes will focus more on the actual quilting than the piecing. And so it should work out okay. I mean, regardless, it is still a pretty quilt. And that's fine. But it did tick me off that these instructions were so horribly written. They were full of spelling errors as well, too. So, word of advice. I don't know if this was a one-off, if every pattern Mr. Domestic has ever written is full of these kind of mistakes. I don't know if it was full of mistakes because of the people who actually edit it. Well, they didn't do a lot of editing. Or who did the actual typesetting of the whole thing. I don't know. Makes me wonder now about other patterns I have downloaded from Art Gallery Fabrics how accurate they are as well. So next time I do one of their patterns that I have in my stash, I'm definitely going to very, very carefully read it all the way through and analyze it. Um, but right now I'm a little burned with using one of his patterns. Like I said, um, he's a great fabric designer. I don't think he's a great fabric or a pattern writer. And pattern writing, to be fair, is a very difficult task. Um, but really, part of the blame falls upon Art Gallery Fabrics if they're the ones who produce the pattern. They need to read over the patterns and edit them for publication. And some of you will say, well, yeah, but it was a freebie anyway, so what do you expect? True, but it doesn't matter if it's a freebie or a bought and pattern. Um, this is a reflection, as you can tell from what I've already said, this is a reflection on both the company that produced the pattern and the designer of the pattern. And so if it's a freebie or not a freebie, that's not an excuse for poor pattern writing. So as I said, I've been burned once. Um, I'll be very hesitant about doing any more of the patterns, whether they're free or bought and pad patterns from art gallery fabrics or for Mr. Domestic. So, you know, you may think I'm being very cruel here, but I'm being very honest about it. So I'll let you see in a little bit of time, a few weeks probably, uh, what this looks like when it's finished once I have it all quilted. Now, the other project I've started working on is a bookshelf or bookcase um, quilt actually going to be a wall hanging and here are three of the blocks from that this is an in the hoop design so i'm using my embroidery machine and 
I think I mentioned it last week. Well, this is as far as I've gotten this week, so I just thought I'd show it to you. Um, I think it's going to be really nice when it's all done, but I have many blocks to go. Now, the blocks don't take that long to make. They probably take about mm, 40 minutes, 45 minutes for each block. Um, and I think I can customize some of the spines on the books, and I think I will do that as well with my own titles. Um, as well, like I'm thinking of slipping in one that says the idiot quilter in there just for fun. Um, so yeah, I'm working on this when I need sort of a break from my other quilting projects. And I do have other projects, but I'm not going to talk about those right now because they're half cocked ideas at the moment. So, okay. So that's what I've been working on. And what's next? Well, what's been, have I got anything new? I'm tripping over my tongue a little bit here today. Can you tell? Um, I got a new book from, and I don't have it handy, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. A new book by Laura Coya from So Very Easy. Uh, she has a YouTube channel. I'm sure many of you are familiar with her YouTube channel. Laura is a great quilter and sewist as well. I bought her very first book. And this is her second book. And I was looking forward to it. I had to do a pre-order before Christmas for it. And it just arrived uh, early last week. And yeah, it's got a lot of projects in it. It's called Patternless Sewing. And well, I'm a little, I'm not disappointed. It's more, I didn't understand what she meant by patternless um, sewing. Um, so this is not a criticism of Laura's book at all. Uh, it's just a criticism of me. There's probably a lot of projects in it that I probably won't make. It is geared towards women. Um, although some of the projects are kind of unisex as well. But you know, that's the way it is in the sewing and quilting community. Everything has a definite feminine bend to it. There needs to be more things produced for men because more and more men are getting into this as well. But nevertheless, uh, it is a, a well-constructed book. I mean, her in, uh, instructions and diagrams are great. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute because I made a little video clip for you to see. And also in that video clip, um, well, I don't know if I... Yes, I do talk about it. Um, I got a thing from Hobbs Batting through, by way of the uh, Quilter on Fires uh, store. Um, and it is a sample pamphlet of all of their batting and you can feel them they're they're on there and so that's a great tool i think to have so i'm going to insert that little video clip here right now so i just got a couple of things in the mail that i had ordered uh, a while ago and they both come in and one is this batting chart from hobbs uh batting company and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. And the other one is this book by Laura Coya. There's a glare on it. Called So Very Easy Patternless Sewing. She just came out with this. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment too. But first I'm going to turn our, my attention to the Hobbs sampler pack of their different battings. Now recently uh, I went to a webinar, a free webinar, sponsored by the Quilter on Fire. And... She had, um, and I don't know what the lady's name is, I've forgotten now, but she's somebody who is definitely up there in this company. And she talked all about, and extensively, about the different kinds of batting and their uses um, made by Hobbs. And of course, you know Hobbs is a major manufacturer of um, batting. So they, during the uh, webinar, which was very, very detailed, very good, it ran about two and a half hours long. So everything you ever want to know about batting was in that webinar and I found it very, very useful. Um, the Quilter on Fire, Brandy, she mentioned that on her website, in her store, she had about 20 copies of this, which are not usually meant for the general public. These are usually taken as samples to quilt stores and places like that. But you could order one from her, but she only had 20. So I jumped right on the bandwagon and got one because I thought this would be a very useful guide. And it came in the mail the other day. And this is what it is. It's a pullout with actual, hold it up here so you can see it, actual samples 
of all of the baddies that they make. And beside each sample is a very uh, extensive write-up, trying to keep the glare off this, as to um, how you use each of the batting and that kind of thing. And on the back, there is a chart. And this chart explains things like um, approximate loth, uh, shrinkage, maximum distance between stitches, uh, whether or not it's good for hand quilting, good for machine quilting, for dark fabrics, or for light fabrics. And so everything you wanted to know is in that chart. So this was a freebie. I just had to pay for mailing, and that only cost about three bucks. And um, so I think this is going to be a very valuable guide. Now, the other thing I want to show you, and I'm going to switch screens here, is Laura Koya's latest book. Now, she had a book about a year or so ago that she came out with. Uh, with some of her different um, quilting designs and patterns. And I found that book very good. Uh, her instructions are very, very clear. And she always shows uh, pictures of each step of the way in the process. So I ordered this book. It was a pre-order. I ordered it before Christmas. And I just got it from Amazon. And the link is in the show notes below um, the other day. And now... I should have known better, but I didn't really read a description of the book in detail. But if you look at the bottom of this, it's called So Very Easy Patternless Sewing by Laura Koya. 23 skill building projects, bags, accessories, home decor, gifts, and more. Well, <laughs> to be honest... I don't know how how I how useful I'm going to find this book. Now that is not a criticism of Laura whatsoever. I watch Laura's YouTube channel faithfully. Uh, it's filled with excellent information. It's just that a lot of these projects, which so many projects are when it comes to sewing, are geared towards females. Uh, for example, here's the first page of the table of contents. Small tissue cover, eyeglass cover, hair scrunchie. Yeah, I don't have enough hair for a scrunchie. Measuring tape waistband um, or wristband. Yeah, I don't wear jewelry except for a ring. Uh, an apron, that might be useful. A scrub cap, mm, don't think so. Little drawstring bag, triangle bag, reversible storage bag. The re reversible storage bag might be okay. These might be all right, the drawstring bag and the triangle bag as gifts, possibly. Strawberry bag, fat quarter friendly drawstring bag, denim line sack, easy zipper pouch. Well, you know, an easy zipper pouch, that's probably something I would find useful. And hanging door pockets, mm, again, more of a gift. Hanging open storage, no, not my cup of tea. Fabric envelope, maybe, maybe, that's a possibility. Reversible, not just for clothes peg, uh, pins bag. Mm, right off the top of my head, I can't see any use for that for me, but maybe. Needle books, okay, that might be uh, helpful. Um, a pin cushion, well, yeah, you know how I love pin cushions. Quilt block roll up. Hmm, that one I'd have to investigate because I'm not sure what that is. Sewing armchair caddy, well, I don't do hand sewing. Custom featherweight case, well, I don't have a featherweight um custom sewing machine cover well okay except that i don't put covers on my sewing machine so generally speaking for me anyways um if i saw this on a book stand and look through the table contents i probably wouldn't invest in it. it's about 31 32 dollars on amazon canadian to purchase it um but I did buy it, I did pre-order it, and I have it. And as I said, well, who knows? Maybe there'll be some things in there that I want to make down the road. But I have a feeling for other people, this might be more um, suitable. Now, just to give you a little sneak peek about the inside, here she shows you how she does her instructions. And she gives you picture uh, pictures of each step along the way. And her uh, instructions are always very, very clear. So, like I said, if the projects that are in this book, you feel you're going to get your money's worth out of it, then I would definitely recommend this book because it is very clearly written. For me, well, never say never. There might be a couple of projects in here that I may uh, make down the road. So that's called, let me just go back to the cover page. 
So Very Easy Patternless Sewing by Laura Koya. And I have put the Amazon.ca link in the show notes below. And just to follow up on my gnome set that I uh, made for my friend Shirley at Ultimate Sewing, I did take it into her last week and she was really thrilled with it, which made me really happy. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of fun. Okay, so quilts. How do you store them? I have a lot. I have a lot of quilts. And they're hanging on the walls. They're hanging on a quilt ladder. They're laid out on my guest bedroom bed. Um, there's quilts everywhere in this house. And I have run out of places to put them. So I'm going to show you what I mean. And I did a, a little video here showing you how I supposedly store my quilts. So how do you store your quilts? Now, I know some people will put them on shelves, fold them up really neatly and put them on large bookcases or things like that. But after a while, you just get so many, you don't know where to put them. And I don't want to put my quilts on a shelf. I want them out sort of on display. But then that presents me with a problem as well, because I don't have a lot of room uh, to put quilts all over the house. So I thought I would share with you today how I actually store my quilts. Now, let me say right off the bat, this is not the right way to store a quilt, I am sure. But it's the only way that I know of right now in given the space I have in my house. So you can see here in this picture, I have a lot of my quilts sitting on a bed in my guest bedroom. And uh, so I have fold the, folded them in various ways. I have uh, layers of quilts along here. These are all different quilts folded uh, so that I can put them sort of, you know, in a domino kind of display. And then I thought just to add variety on here, I took some of my quilts and kind of folded them into triangles and they're on one side. And I've got a few up here on top of the pillows. These pillows, by the way, are not one of my quilts or I did not make these. These were bought many years ago from a store uh, with a quilt like motif to them. In fact, I got those before I ever even got into quilting or even thought about getting into quilting. So they're fake. But these are not. These are all my quilts. And in this little pile that's sitting right here, which looks like I need to straighten that up a little bit, are uh, table runners and banners. So on this bed alone, there are over 25 quilts. That's not counting the table runners. So if that's not enough, then I have a few more on a quilt ladder. Now, I bought this quilt ladder when I first got into quilting, and I thought, I'll never fill it. There's plenty of room. Wrong not so i did fill it now what's on here are some of my very earliest quilts and they were tended to be a little bit smaller and there are some table runners and a few banners on here as well not really the way you're supposed to display quilts on a quilt ladder in fact i might take a lot of these off and select about four different quilts and fold them in a way so that they looks it looks a little bit neater this looks like the laundries being hung out to uh, dry. Now, I do have quilts hanging around the house as well, which is another form of storage. So I have wall quilts, which you've seen uh, in my background usually, going down in from the stairs up top down into my uh, rec room area, my sewing room area. I have a quilt hanging in my um, Lucy room, where the long arm is, just to break up the unfinished wall look in there. I have a quilt on the back of a couch in my family room and I'm thinking about putting a quilt in my more formal living room dining room over the quilt at or over the couch there as well. Um, there are there's a quilt on my bed. There is a banner and uh, another quilt hanging in the bedroom as well so they are all over the place plus table runners on tables table toppers on tables the house is full of quilts so what's one to do well start giving them away we'll see so as you can see there's a lot of them so i gotta really start giving more quilts away i really do Okay, so that takes us to the subscribers quilt of the week. And this is by Cheryl 
Hogan. And Cheryl Hogan is a regular viewer of The Idiot Quilter. And here's her latest this creations. quilts from a subscriber come from Cheryl Hogan, who's a regular on uh, The Idiot Quilter. And this time, Cheryl hasn't sent us a quilt, but she has sent us a beautiful bag that she has created, as you can see here. And I really love the fabric. And the fabric looks to me like it might be Australian fabric or Australian um, inspired fabric uh, as well. And what's really unique about this bag, I noticed, was the zippers on the side. So the bag is expandable, and I don't think I have ever seen that kind of design. Plus, it looks like the bottom of the bag has been done in a vinyl as well. It looks like a really great bag. Um, she also sent us a picture of some towels that she had embroidered right here. Uh, with a neat, a good design pattern. Um, so she's really been quite busy. And again, you know, this is kind of a, a neat little technique that you can use to dress up towels, make great for gifts or things like that for people. And, you know, you can either buy uh, tea towel fabric uh, by the yard or go to your dollar store or uh, Walmart or something like that and pick up uh, a simple tea towel and just do your own embroidery right on the towel itself. So it's an easy way to make a very quick and easy gift. So thank you, Cheryl, for uh, showing both of these beautiful projects. And I've got to say, I just absolutely love this bag. And she says it was a so sweetness pattern. I may have to look into that website. Thanks again, Cheryl. Now, last week, you may have remembered that I put up a video uh, of the Idiot Quilter Presents. It was an interview with um, Kristen Hubert from Scotland, who has um, a YouTube channel called Scrap Fabric Love. And so I thought I would review her uh, YouTube channel for you as well. The YouTube channel of the week is by Kristen Hubert, and you may remember that I interviewed her last week, and her interview is now posted on the channel. And she has her own channel called Scrap Fabric Love. And what I really like about uh, Kristen's uh, channel is she shows you how to get the most out of fabric that uh, she picks up as in, well, I don't know if you should call it secondhand, but she gets a lot of her fabrics from eBay, and a lot of it is scraps. And she shows you how to use your scraps up to create some very unique projects. And if you look here at her homepage and look at some of the titles, she has eBay Fabric Haul, Weight Loss Quilt. That is really interesting. If you don't know what that is, you need to check this out because Kristen has a real a motivative technique for creating a quilt while you record uh, your weight loss as well. I thought that was very, very uh, interesting and very unique. And I think she has quite a large following of this as well. Um, so, you know, there's two things blended into one and using quilting to motivate you to achieve a certain goal. She has a farmer's wife quilt, 1930s. Uh, her, and then, she, of course, she talks about her various projects and things like that as well. Let's take a look at her playlists and see how she's grouped things. So if you go to the playlists, and a lot of people don't necessarily do this, go to the playlists of a YouTube channel, but you should really, because then you have things more organized. Uh, you're not just looking at things as they uh, were put up. So we have the Wilt Weight Loss Quilt, of course, and there's six videos in that. She has quilted gifts. So if you're looking to make something for somebody, you might want to check that out. She has her sewing room makeover. Everybody is always interested in how other people uh, organize their supplies. Foundation paper piecing, uh, quilt as you go, projects, um, how to make fabric from your scraps. So there, upcycled denim and old jeans. And... Kristen is very much into upcycling things as well. I believe in the interview, she told me she used to have a YouTube channel and she may still have it, the same one, where it wasn't about quilting, but it was about upcycling uh, different products and things you might have laying around the house. Um, again, she talks about uh, buying fabric on eBay, which is something I had never really thought of doing. So that's quite interesting. 
and business tips for crafters and upcyclers. So she's got a lot of very interesting and unique YouTube uh, videos for you to check out. So do check out Scrap Fabric Love. So that takes me to what's on my vision board this week. And it's a future project and it's called Fall Drive. And it's a pattern in the magazine that I've been showing you lately, an old magazine. Um, called McCall's Quilting Magazine. It's the September, October 2018 edition of that. And this is a pattern down the road. It features leaves. And, you know, there's three things right now that I love in a quilt, and that's leaves, butterflies, actually four things, leaves, butterflies, cats, and gnomes. This week's pattern for my vision board, again, comes from the magazine that I've had hidden on my bookshelf for quite a while. And it's called McCall's Quilting and it was the September, October edition from 2018. And this whole edition has uh, a lot of quilts that feature leaves. And that's probably why I picked it up because I really like the leaf motif in quilts. And this one is very, very colorful. It's called Fall Drive. And um, it's uh, not a huge quilt. It looks like it measures, well, actually it is a pretty big quilt. It's 108 and a half by 108 and a half. So that's a good size. Um, I don't know if I would do it in these particular colors, although I do kind of like the colors that are in it. They appeal to my sense of brightness because I love bright colors, as you well know. Now it says the finished blocks, there's four blocks that are 21 by 21. And well, all the blocks are 21 inches by 21 inches. So that's pretty large. And I would think it would go together pretty fast. She says under planning, crisp fall colors and big bold leaves combine in this spectacular bed sized quilt. The natural variation of color in the batik fabrics make them perfect for the leaves in this quilt. You can almost feel the cool fall breeze and a good night's sleep was practically guaranteed. So she has used batiks in this and I'm also a fan of batiks. So again, another reason why this one appealed to me. Fall drive consists of 16 21 inch piece blocks and sashing with a small amount of foundation piecing. So there's a little bit of foundation piecing in here as well. And I imagine that's probably the, the star shapes, uh, the ones in the center. And well, they look like sort of what the leaves circle around. Those I imagine are probably uh, paper foundation piecing. Um, our quick and easy techniques make this bed size quilt come together in a jiffy. So yeah, this one looks very doable and it looks like it might go together very fast as well. So that's one on my vision board for future consideration. And I did another interview in the past few days, and this is with a fascinating lady, Karen Campbell. Uh, we had a really wonderful discussion, and she is just a really interesting quilter at all levels. Um, and I think what's really amazing is that Karen is 77 years old and going strong. And I don't know about you, but that certainly gives me uh, a lot of hope for the future. I want to be Karen when I get to that age. I want to still be going, still with lots of plans, and still want to be, you know, creative and innovative. Um, so here's my interview, or here's a little teaser. It's not the interview, um, but here's the teaser for my interview you're, with you're right, Karen Campbell. as an artist. Once in a while, have a good idea. <laughs> but both few and far between, I am mostly a technician. Okay. I can copy just about anything I see. Ah, okay. Of course, I, as a beginning quilter, I can copy a beautiful Ohio star, but it doesn't necessarily look that great. Oh. So I'm practicing. I'm getting there. You get yeah. there. But, and I was the same way as a sewer. If I didn't have a pattern, nothing was coming. I could sometimes mix patterns together. Hmm. You know, use a sleeve from right. one and a neckline from another. But I really do consider myself more of a technician than an innovative artist. So one of my own creations that I'm going to critique this week is actually a wall hanging. And uh, speaking of gnomes, yes, this one featured gnomes. Now, this was a Christmas quilt that I had forgotten about. 
Um, I did put it up at Christmas time, but I've never really uh, reviewed it. So here's my review of my gnome wall hanging. This week's quilt of my own that I'm going to critique is, yes, a Christmas themed one, but it also features gnomes. And lately I've been showing you a lot of my gnome creations because I'm obsessed with them. And I kind of forgot to show you this one at Christmas time. So here it is. Uh, it was a panel and I fell in love with the panel when I first saw it. And I think this is the one that got me really into gnomes. Um, I made this not this year, but last year at Christmas time. So it's over a year old and uh, I just fell in love with it. And then I found this coordinating fabric uh, here that I've used in one of the borders, which were gnomes as well. And uh, I really love that. And then this outside piece. Now, the outside border was actually part of the panel and I cut that off and then reused it for my border all the way around. But of course I didn't have enough of it to do the whole thing. So I just used some black fabric uh, in the top and the bottom borders. Um, I did quilt it, but I quilted this on my embroidery machine. So that's why you have these neat little rows of these little motifs that are here, which for the sake of a panel, I didn't think it worked out too badly. Now, let's be a little bit more critical about it. I made this over a year or so ago. I didn't have Lucy. I had just started using panels in quilts. In fact, this might have been one of my very first panels. So what's wrong with this? Well, a couple of things. Or I shouldn't say what's wrong. What would I do differently if I was to do this again? Well, first of all, I don't think I would use these cut off pieces from the panel as borders, mainly because they get a little wonky. Now, of course, in the picture, the way this is hung up on some cupboards to show you um, has distorted it a little bit. But nevertheless, I don't think I would do that again. And you also will notice there is no binding on this quilt. I did this with that using that envelope pillow sort of method, you know, where you turn it uh, inside out and pull it through and that kind of thing. I don't think I would do that on a wall hanging again. But this was a really quick little project and I guess I just wanted to get it done. The other thing is I don't think I did any quilting in the borders and I didn't. And that's not good because I think what happens here, this is my theory, if you don't, if you do your quilting in the center but nothing in the outside, that also uh, contributes to distortion in the way your quilt will hang or lay as well. But as I said, this was a very quick little project. I saw the panel, I wanted to use it. And so I didn't put a whole lot of effort into this quilt, as you can see. This probably took me a couple of hours to make. Now, the other thing I don't like is I had this gnome fabric, uh, a print, but basically you wouldn't know what it is. It just doesn't look quite right. I maybe should have tried to fussy cut it a little bit more. So at least you may have gotten the heads of the gnomes all along here, which I think might have been kind of cute as well. So this one is, you know, it was a quick little project. It looks nice at Christmas time. It hangs up somewhere uh, or thrown over the back of a couch or something like that. But um, really, this is not gift a bowl because I would never give this quilt to somebody else. And it's just kind of a reminder or a learning kind of thing where I can see, okay, this is what I wouldn't do in the future. But nevertheless, I still like the little panel with the gnomes. Yes, I'm all about gnomes. So be prepared. I'll let you know a little secret. I am in the process of making another quilt with some gnomes and maybe some kitty cats. Yeah, it's going to be sort of an original design. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. That's something that I'll reveal to you if it works out down the road. Okay, so that takes me to the online fabric store of the week. This one is called Quilty Pleasures. And here's my review of that. This week's quilt store online is called Quilty Pleasures. And I believe they're located in the Ottawa, Ontario uh area. In fact, it's in a little suburb of Ottawa called Orleans. And uh, I have never been to this store at all. 
Um, they obviously though do have a brick and mortar store as well as this online. So let's take a look at their homepage. Uh, welcome back. It's a new year. We're open and can't wait to see you. Okay. And a picture it looks like of the owners here. Um, they have COVID guidelines. They have their hours posted and they have curbside uh, pickup. Vote for Quilty Pleasures. Um, so there is some sort of contest they're soliciting you for. And uh, they look like they also sell uh, FAF sewing machines as well. Um, yeah, so they're FAF. Now, there's not a lot of FAF dealers around, so that's something. Um, looks like they also feature Moda. Um, and Quilty Flex Flips. If you're looking for some enlightening entertainment, search no further. Quilty Pleasures is producing a series of videos that bring you up to speed on great gadgets to make your sewing experience easier, more creative, and more fun. Okay, so let's take a look. Why don't we? Let's just take a quick look here and see what they've got. Uh, they're on YouTube, and they, it's going to a playlist on YouTube as well. And, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like what they're doing is advertising some of the products that they carry in their store. But that's not a bad idea. It also gives you an idea of how maybe to use some of these things. So let's get out of that. Uh, fabric, they have highlighting some different brands of fabric that they have. Um, they have Eleganza thread, it looks like. And I think that is an embroidery thread. Uh, well, it says for hand quilters. So there you go. That's how much I know. And uh, also they have books about sewing as well. Hmm, interesting. And of course, their fast machine. All right, and a newsletter. And a gift registry. So there's a lot of information uh, on here, gift cards, rewards. Uh, they have a loyalty program, uh, another book, Trentex Fabrics. Okay, so they have a lot of information on uh, their page. Um, so let's go up and check out their shop and see what they have okay fabric well let's see what they're charging for fabric and what they have to choose from so they have the sidebar over here showing you all their different brands and moda northcott willington prince robert kaufman riley blake designs dear stella um you all what does that give us oh much more okay they've got well at least in their listing they have quite a few brand names here and they do list what they show in that ah, timeless treasures one of my favorite let's go there and uh, let's check out their price um minimum order one meter it says of that one well of course that's because it's basically a border fabric um hmm, 1050 for that 22.99 22.99 Look a little pricey. I'm assuming these prices are probably uh, per meter. They don't say up here. Let's just click on one and find out. Yeah, it's by the meter. Okay, but it is by the meter, not the yard. So that's good. And uh, yeah, if you if they don't have the full amount, you can they'll send you what they have. Okay, I've seen that on some other websites as well. Okay, so that's pricey though. That's twenty three dollars a meter. That's very pricey, but it might be the brand. So let's go back and look at something that's maybe not so specific. Um, that was Timeless Treasures. So let's take a look at what do we have down here. Whoa. Oh, that's fat quarter bundles. I was going to say, just scanning through here, the different ones. Oh, some of it's $24, $25. All right. Their prices are high. Yeah, these are high. Okay. Um, so what about solids? Let's look in Moda and see what we have there. If their solid prices are any less. Well, do they have any solids? There's a solid. Okay, $13.99, that's a little better. 
for a solid, but $14.99. Yeah, okay. I think they're a little on the expensive side. Looks like a good selection of fabrics, but a little bit on the upper end for price. So what do you got in the bargain basement? Maybe we'll get some deals here. Well, they have some sale patterns. Uh, bargain basement has 308 items in it. So what's, well, there's a drop in price. 20, $26 regularly, $13. $12, $11. Okay, so these are these are pretty good, but is there something here that you want? <laughs> That's the question. Um, if there is, then go for it. Right now, nothing's really grabbing me at all in this, which often is the case for me when I look at uh, on-sale fabrics or bargain. There's a reason why they're on sale and they're a bargain, because nobody really wants them. Uh, so they're trying to get rid of them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe there is something in there that some people would like. But right now, nothing's really grabbed me in those bargain fabrics, sale patterns. Well, let's, while we're here, let's take a look at what they have. Uh, any patterns grabbing me? Mm, nope. Nothing there grabbing me at all. So let's go back into the main part, into the main shop. And uh, they have gift ideas. Bag making hardware and supplies, nifty notions, batting. Let's check out their batting prices because I have a feeling they're probably a little on the high side too. Uh, nature's touch. Okay, it looks like they have batting that's already. Tuscany batting. Well, that's wool. Okay, that's why it's expensive. Uh, thermal batting, Talon, bamboo. They all look like it's all done. Um, yeah, that not really a great selection, and they're all packaged as well. So, yeah, I don't think I would be going here for batting. Um, all right. What else can we check out here? Books, sewing machine feed, furniture, irons. Interfacing and stabilizers, gift cards, kits. Let's check out their kits. $70 for a table runner kit? Hmm, that seems a little pricey to me. Um, 160, 63 by 63, 199. Hmm, not really sure. That's a panel, $96.99. Hmm. I don't know, but I think that their prices on kits are a little bit on the upper end. I could be wrong. I don't often buy kits, but um, just in comparison to what I've seen online from a few other stores, I think they're on the higher end. Uh, what else do we have here that we could take a look at? notions let's check out their notions adhesives marking pens organization organization what do we got under organization okay sewing machine bags pin holders yeah okay Yeah, the standard stuff, and I guess the prices are about standard as well. Now, I did see they had pre-cuts, and you know I love my pre-cuts. So I'm going to take a look at what they're offering in that section. Pre-cuts and panels. 10-inch squares. 2.5-inch strips. 5-inch squares. Fat quarters, panels. Well, let's take a look at the fat quarters. And hmm, mystery fat quarter bundle for fat quarters eleven ninety nine. That's not bad, depending on what you end up with. Um, yeah, I'm not really 
Now, I'm not really impressed by what they're offering in pre-cuts. And this seems to be the way it is on most Canadian stores. I just don't find the selection like you find on the American stores for um, pre-cuts. Um, now, I may have jumped a little out of that too soon because that was just one section. Let's take a look at their two and a half inch strips. Their two and a half inch strips. Let's go. Okay. Let's see what they're offering here. Jelly Wolves, Kaufman, $64.99, Moda, Riley Blake, Domino Effect. Again, not that much to choose from. And price wise, I think that's about average uh, from what I've seen on other websites. So, mm, not going here for really pre cuts, nothing really grabbing my fancy at all. Okay, so what haven't we checked out that might be of interest? Um, patterns. What's their selection of patterns like? We have applique, baby, and child care base. I do like the way they uh, organize things. Um, uh, let's check out, okay, quilt patterns. Let's go right here. Um, yeah, okay. Anything grabbing me with this standing out from the crowd? Um, that's one I've never seen before. Dragon Dreams quilt pattern. That's interesting. Some of these other ones, though, I have seen before. And the prices are, yeah, about what the prices are. Um, the average. And... Well, they have a fair number. They have three pages of patterns, so I guess they have a fair number of patterns uh, to check out. And let's see. Okay, so we've looked at no, we we have we've looked at uh, well, we haven't looked at nifty notions, but that's that looks like that's just taking us to videos. Oh no, it's not. That's expensive for that many iron. The Olysio, that is very expensive because I've seen it for about $89.99. I've never seen it priced that high. So that's pretty expensive. Um, and all the rest of this is pretty much standard. Stripology XL ruler, yeah, that's about the going price for that one. Okay, well, yeah. You'd have to know your prices on notions and things. Um, all right. So let's take a look at, well, just very quickly at machines. It looks like they deal with FAF. And uh, you'd have to go in and talk to them in the store or email them about prices on that kind of thing. They have cabinets, classes. What are they offering? Fall classes. We're talking about social distancing, so this looks like their classes are in person. Uh, they do have their classes listed in a calendar format, so let's see what they're offering. And, wait, view calendar, okay. January, we have nothing. No classes that. So it looks to me like a poor sense, probably because of COVID, that they're not offering any classes right now until we see what happens with that. Okay. Tips and apps. Uh, so they're taking you to some free apps here on your phone. This is Schmidt's Needles. Um, yeah, okay. I haven't seen that really on other sites, but that's nothing... That's not an, a feature that uh, makes me want to go to this particular uh, quilt store because, I mean, you can just do a search on your phone, right? And find all kinds of stuff. Uh, stuff we love. Okay, so they love Schmidt's needles. Applique needles, applique fuse mat. Okay, they're just, again, sort of advertisements uh, for some of the products they have. Scrap bag. Um, scrapbook page is much like every sculptor's collection of useful bits and pieces saved from previous endeavors. I'm like the little bundle of treasures, we're adding things from time to time. Okay. 
So if you need, all right, I'm just general information on things, I guess. But it's okay. Let's see if we can find out about their shipping. And here we are. So Ontario and Quebec order valued at $75 and under. It's $10 for shipping. That's not bad. And if it's over $75, it's free. Okay. And then they have, yeah, in other places too. Um, well, that's okay. Their, their shipping costs don't seem to be too bad. Um, they're shipped by Canada Post. Okay. So that's their, actually the shipping prices are pretty good uh, with that. So overall, um, will I be coming here to do some shopping? I don't think so. Um, I didn't see anything that was really grabbing me. I think that they're, the one thing that stands out for me is the price of their fabrics. I think it's expensive, uh, but their shipping is good price. So it's up to you what you think. So that takes me to what's coming up and there's lots of things coming up tomorrow. Wednesday, February the 2nd, Groundhog Day. That's the first Wednesday of the month. So you know it's craft and chat time. Uh, craft and chat will start at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and run until about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know the drill. I have talked about this many times, but if you happen to be a brand new viewer of The Idiot Quilter and this is your first um, episode, welcome. Uh, what craft and chat is, it's a Zoom virtual meeting get together where anybody who wants to drop in uh, at those times can and I post the zoom link in the show notes below and we get together and work on whatever we're working on it can be anything to do with sewing or quilting knitting crochet painting art journaling scrapbooking whatever doesn't matter what it is um it has been growing each month we gain a few new people which is nice Everybody is very friendly, very supportive. It's very relaxed. It's like getting together with some friends over coffee and your projects and just sharing ideas and just working on whatever. And it gives you a few hours of your time for you. So that's tomorrow, February the 2nd, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Zoom link is in the show notes below. I hope to see you then. Also, I've been thinking there many people have said to me they would like to join in on the craft and chats but they work go figure that eh? work hmm. want to put food on the table i guess well eating's overrated right um but being a retired person myself i didn't really think about that <laughs> so i'm thinking about holding pop-up so days that would happen on either a saturday or a sunday it would only be for a few hours you know, maybe start in the mid-morning and go till mid-afternoon on one of those days. It's a drop-in kind of thing, sort of like craft and chat. And, you know, you can just come and work on whatever you want to work on at that time. Now, it would be on a weekend, a Saturday or a Sunday, because this would accommodate those people who can't make the craft and chat, but might be able to make something like this if it's held on a weekend. Now, here's the kicker. I don't know when I'm having these. That's why it's called a pop-up. It just happens. So what I would probably do is 24 hours before the event, I would do a very quick YouTube announcement saying, this is when I'm having it. You're more than uh, welcome to join in. So you need to make sure you have the notification bell, you know, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell. So you'll get a notice that that has gone up because as I said, It'll only be 24 hours before, and I never know when I'm going to do these. To date, I haven't done one yet. Um, those of you that are on my mailing list for Craft and Chat, I will send you out the link via that. And if you want to be on that mailing list as well, then just drop me a line saying so, and I will add you to my Craft and Chat slash Pop Up So Day um, emailing list. Um, don't worry. I don't advertise things. I don't sell things. I don't give your, uh, information out to anybody else. It's solely for the purpose of what I just said. Um, so I've had, we'll see, I haven't had one yet. We'll see how it goes with the first one. And if it seems like that's, you know, successful, then I'll hold more of them as time goes by. When my mood says that I don't feel like sewing alone.
yeah, whatever. Okay, now, big news is, and uh, if you've been watching my other videos, you already know about it. Idiot Quilter Retreat, the third one, is about to happen in March, March the 5th. Look how fast January went. February will go even faster, so then bang, we're on in March. So March the 5th, it is a Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, running until approximately 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you are interested, I have put in the show notes uh, the Zoom link for it. And there's also a Zoom link for the Icebreaker cocktail party on the Friday night before, which is March the 4th, starting at 7 p.m. Uh, if you are interested, um, you don't have to pre-register for it. But if you want more details, then just drop me a line and I will send you the complete uh, package, so to speak. It is free, absolutely free. I am trying to line up a few guest speakers. So if you out there would be interested in being one of my guest speakers to talk about something you're proud of or that you have some expertise in, uh, don't be shy. Let me know. We'll discuss it further. Um, there will be prizes as well, um, which are in the form of Amazon gift certificates. And there might be a few other little interesting things happening during that day. Um, they've always been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a lot of people who have gone to the other two that I've run before and have already told me they want to come to this one. Um, I can accommodate 95 people. Um, but even though I say there's no pre-registration, just for my own sake, for my statistics, if you can drop me uh, a message, my email is in the show notes below, just saying, yep, you're planning to come, then I'll just put you on the list. Um, and also, if there's any last minute details, I can get that information out to you as well, because I'll have your email contact information as well. Um, if by chance, though, you can't show up, life happens, that's not a worry. Don't worry about it. And as I said, this is absolutely free. So I hope to see you on March the 5th and at the cocktail party as well, because the cocktail party is always fun as well. You bring your favorite beverage and maybe some snacks and we get together for a couple of hours. Bring something to show us if you like, something maybe you're planning to work on during the retreat or something you're just very proud of. Uh, bring that along to show at the cocktail party. And also I am want to create a trunk show of people's creations. So if you've got uh, one or two, keep it limited to, to no more than two, please. Just send me a picture in JPEG format, JPG format, and uh, with your full name, first and last, and I'll put together a slideshow that we'll look at during the retreat. I don't need any explanation, nothing like that, because I don't get into that. I just make a quickie slideshow um, and show everybody's wonderful creations. And that always seems to be very popular. Uh, it was at least on the other two retreats that I've done. So all of that information and the deadline for that, which is March the 1st, is in the detailed email that I will send to you once you tell me that you are interested in attending the retreat. Okay. So I think that's it for me today on this episode. I hope you have a creative week. I hope you have a good week. I hope you're, you're warm if you're in the northern climes here right now. We're going through a bit of, well, it's called winter. Um, and I hope you're healthy as well and stay healthy. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.